folks. Welcome to Follow the Leader, a podcast focused on telling character-driven stories through the use of GMless tabletop games where we can all take the lead. You can find us on Twitter at FTLCast and at FTLCast.com. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash FTLCast. Today we're playing In the Air Tonight by Austin Ramsey. And those of you who are new to this game, here are the basics. In the Air Tonight is inspired by the famous scene from the pilot episode of Miami Vice. I want to caveat here, I had never seen this scene until about 10 minutes ago. Same. You and your partner have a task that must be accomplished, but you aren't there yet. You won't know if you'll succeed, and there's no way to know the cost. On the way to your dire deed, you contemplate what lies ahead, your fears and hopes, and what lies behind, your regrets and doubts. In the Air Tonight is a two-player game where you ask each other questions to tell a story. You can use spindle wheel cards during it. I'm just going to say that now. Uh, I'm Mac. You can find me on the internet wherever you get content at Citadel of Swords. Um, you can find the uh, writing about wrestling that I do at gatecrashers.fan. Uh, you can find the podcasting guild that we are a part of, Standing Stones, on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Um, that'll have links to all the other shows on the network, including Dem Kids, including Roomware, including... Uh, the Escafil Files, which my lovely partner for today is on, um, and Gay Space Rocks, of course, to talk about Steven Universe. Uh, and playing with me today, we have... What's up? It's me, Jade. You can find me on Twitter and the newly renamed Tumblr, Jade God Oxford bless. Rose. <laughs> uh, as well as Oxford Rose on a bunch of other things. Go find me. Maybe say hi. Um, Macquarie did a great job of introducing every other thing I'm currently doing, uh, so I'll just tell you that my pronouns are still they, them. <laughs> um, our lines, which are things we absolutely do not want to see, are homophobia and transphobia, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, violence against children and animals, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, unwanted pregnancy, plagues, and pandemics. Uh, our veils, which are things we're fine with addressing, but we'll just fade to black on. Our Stevie situations, graphic descriptions of bodily harm, and terminal illness. Now that we've got all that, let's get star-hearted. Well, we should uh, commission some music for this, given Ooh. the scene that's inspiration. If we go to, like, Zach or Brian or both, and be just like, hey guys, you want to do a riff on In the Air tonight, but make it for hey, all hey. either. Yeah, y'all want to do an In the Air tonight riff? That would be really you good. You want to do something with some dope drums? do please please give us some dope ass drums So we have one line in this doc. <laughs> in the Air Tonight is a one-page game <laughs> and a one spindle wheel spread game. And you don't even have to use the spindle wheel spread. So as fitting, we have one line <laughs> in this doc. And it says, femme fatales ready to get shit done. Yes. Very happy about it. Um, I suppose we should introduce our characters, or at least a little bit about them, before we start diving into questions. Yes, I would agree with that. And maybe 
Like, the game is purposely vague, and, like, a lot of the questions are about... To be fair, I don't think any of the questions are what... Oh, no, that's one of the last questions. So, really, why these characters are here, we don't need to answer yet. Mm -hmm. I suppose you and I, before we need to dive in, should maybe establish... Ooh, is this, like, urban fantasy? Yes. So, there we go. Yes! So imagine... I'm never going to say no! <laughs> That's true. I wasn't expecting you to say no. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> these things are good to establish. But, like, given the, like, the, the direct inspiration for the game, but also these characters, I feel like, okay, let's just, like, take a step sideways and boom. Oh, look, we did a heck in urban fantasy. And it's yeah. good. Oh, yeah. I want to introduce our characters and then I have a thought for you as mm -hmm. to how they met. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you should introduce your character first, as technically she is new to follow the leader. Oh, no, that was the reason why I wanted to introduce my character second. All right, then I'll introduce my character first. Um, <laughs> wait, okay, so bringing to the stage, uh, calling <laughs> set, uh, you know them. Sort of, unless you haven't listened to any of the previous arcs. I am returning with, uh, I think I'm going to call them Coyote Regent in this iteration. Because mm -hmm. Coyote Sparks just doesn't quite fit right with this. Uh, but Coyote is Coyote, regardless. Um, small, uh, non binary femme with long ass red hair, the colour of autumn leaves, gold eyes, and a smile with slightly too sharp a teeth hiding beneath. Mm. Uh, expertly applied lipstick. Actually, this is possibly the closest to the original incarnation of Kyoti from season one that they've been in a long time. So this is fun. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, let me be clear, they are still of a fey inclination in, in this yes. universe. Um, but we're gonna very much leaning into their uh, femme fatale slash them fatale slash om fatale origins. So, um, you should know that they thick and uh, occasionally will like just happen to be a fox, as you do. These are you know these are the things. I don't know whether this version of them does magic. That might be something that comes up in play. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. That we'll find out. Uh, but uses uh, they, them pronouns, but uh, is happy with also like uh, feminine fem uh, forms of address. Hell yeah. I love them. I'm really excited to finally get to play off of them. God shit. No, you haven't, have you? I don't think I have. How, is that, how has that happened in fucking five and a bit seasons? Hmm. Mm. We... Whenever we play together, we want to play the same characters. That's true. Which is valid of us. We're so valid. So I know we're only just here validating each other, which made <laughs> the point. Um, <laughs> they left us unsupervised again, Mac. <laughs> they did. They did. That was their mistake. <laughs> Introduce your character. <laughs> I am I am playing a character that has never been played before on Follow the Leader, and in fact, uh, not very many, I think only five people ever played with. So that's good. And nice. Um, I'm playing a character, uh, her name is Lady Charlena Jackstat. Um, she is a sword lesbian. That's, that's it. That's what I got. No, I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> She is a very put together regal lady. She is also secretly a double agent <laughs> in the in the good way, in the good way. Um cuz she comes so she comes from the aristocracy, whatever that aristocracy looks like. But uh, she cares too much. She has a soft heart. And thankfully she has she doesn't quite have the power and the influence to change the system because like she's the only one um but she does have the power and the influence to um protect the weak so that's kind of the shit that she does she is i am going to find a new face cast for her at some point um but she is uh, an older lady not like 
older, older, but like in her 40s, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Very gorgeous, very blonde, very uh, tall, <laughs> tall buff, tall buff sword lesbian. I would call her a MILF, but she's not a mother yet. We'll see what happens. I can't believe we've once again done this where you're playing a tall buff person and I'm playing a short redhead. We have to stop doing this. <laughs> Kyoti is all of like five foot tall, but they wear high heels. I think Char is now she's she's she has to be under six feet because I can't deal with that. Short person problems. It, it's just she's just hot. <laughs> She can't be that hot. She could be like six plus once she put a pair of shoes on her. Yes. And she does. She wears heels. Mm-hmm. She is she is very like like, you know, business professional, red lipstick. I am just picturing Gwendolyn Christie right now until you give me another face claim. You know what? That works. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's picture Gwendolyn Christie until I figure out a better face claim, because I gotta, I gotta sit with that for a little bit. You're valid. Um, and she uses she, her pronouns. Yeah, I've never found a face claim for Coyote that I like, possibly because there aren't a whole bunch of, like, very femme-presenting AMAB folk around for me to go, yes, that's the vibe I want. Yeah, that's fair. I do, and this is partially a faith thing, uh, that Kyoto's definitely got sort of like that real nice, like light demerara sugar kind of brown skin. Uh, again, like like my my characters are hot because that's what I want, and that's what I think you are delightful listeners deserve. Yes, but I have yet. If you, if anyone knows somebody that fits that bill, please like DM me on Twitter or something. Go, hey Jade, have you considered? Because there are, there's got to be people that gorgeous in the world. I know for a fact that yeah. there are. I'm just unfortunate enough to not meet them. So. Is no, I can't. I'm not going to do that. I don't know what is. I think for Char, there's lots of stuff in her history, mm. but like, as far as anyone is concerned, she's human mm. because it's all so diluted. Sure. Like, for all intents and purposes, human. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, human. I just need to attack Mac with this picture. Please stand by. <laughs> it's just a good vibe. If Discord will wake up and let me post this picture here. Because I, I do think that there's also Faye in her. But it's not like... It's, 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 damn, this picture is taking fucking forever to send. It was, it was too big. It was too powerful, too high resolution. So I'm going to see if this one is slightly uh, more tolerable. There we go. So I think, so I think, I think there's some fey in her. I think there was some wear in her. Um, Mm. I think there were, there are vampires in her family. I cannot in good conscience make her a vampire. I just i was thinking of yes very much so um i I was thinking about it and i was like it would fit and i'm like i think that's too on the nose and i know that we do that but i'm like "Mm, i don't want to do that this 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 on the nose and this feeling like maybe you're leaning too far into a trope like yeah tropes that can be all well and good but sometimes you don't want to necessarily take the most obvious option as fun as it can be yeah so hope so i'll think about like what is going on with her and i'll get back to y'all about it (laughs) i like the notion that she's human enough that humans think she's human but Mm -hmm. has enough of something else going on that the other folk know that she's also them yes yeah i like that cool and that's i mean that's the reason why she's she's doing you know what she does and that's the reason why she's able to do what she does because they can trust her Mm -hmm. yeah and i've talked before uh last time we saw kyoti was (laughs) 
uh, when we played the best around, actually. Um, thanks, Austin. Oh, yeah. Um, so you have played off Coyote. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did forget about that. That was such a different vibe to the usual games, because that's just a one-off universe I can see. Also, there was, like, skateboarding and things in that game. So it's... Yeah, I was... I, I more remember everyone making me uh, do a fucking you know, justify your position to Austin Ramsey, which is like, this is my least favorite game in all of Firebrands. So why are you making me do this? Uh-huh. Also, like, when you're playing, when there's, like, a skeleton in a red track so that can make himself taller, it's really easy to forget everyone else who was in the game. <laughs> That's true. That is also true. Um, but to circle back to why I mentioned that game and had this realization, um... Kyori has, uh, in various iterations, been linked to the Fey hierarchy, monarchy, political structures, and definitely does like sort of envoy work for sure. So I like bringing that sort of energy in. So, but what was your thought on how these two could have met? Okay, so we had talked about them potentially being assassins, mm-hmm. and I like the idea if they met on. A job, not where they were assigned the same person, but where they were assigned the opposite people. So it's like, you have to, Kyote had to assassinate someone in protection of someone else, and Char had to assassinate the other person in protection of the person that you had to assassinate. I'm with you, I'm with you. I was like, what, what? I was trying to connect some dots. And yeah, pop- you were trying to connect some dots. I got that. I got you there. I got you. Yeah, there. no, no, I get you. Like the marks were together that we were assigned yeah. to do, but yeah. we d- it wasn't a conflict of interest. So I was going to say I'm enjoying the Mister and Missus Smith angle that we're already bringing to the table. <laughs> I do like the notion that given that, like uh, Char does, is it sorry? Is it Char or Char when you're shortening it? Oh, I don't fucking know. I don't actually know how to pronounce her name. Well, it's like, how how do you tend to pronounce it? I don't say it that much, to be fair. fair. So I think it should be Char. Okay. I think it should be Char. Gotcha. Uh, I do like the notion that because like Char is like is like this sort of diplomat type, and Kia does envoy work, that maybe they both just like they know each other from like functions and things like that and had yes. no idea that they did this kind of work as well <laughs> and it's just like it's literally like a oh funny running into you here when the here is an assassination <laughs> attempt yes and it's kind of like I think I, I do also like the idea like afterwards Char goes to Kyote and is like okay I like you enough that I would like to compare notes to make sure that we're doing the same thing. Hmm. Good shit. Because I like you enough that if we're on opposite sides, I would like to, I would prefer to avoid you if at all possible so that we don't, I don't make things messy by Mm -hmm. mistake. But they're on the same side, so it's fine. Very good. Okay. What was the other thing I was, I was going to say something else. Oh, 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 I think it's or I'm going to I'm going to DM you this one. Ooh. Ooh, I can spell. Eh. As long as you get a vibe, it's fine. Yes, good. Here for it. Love it. Yeah. I can hear I can hear Jade typing also. See, I also can't spell. Curse of the thing. <laughs> it's too. fine. I, at least, if you, for me, I couldn't spell Kyote. <laughs> well, you mean the strange name I picked for my character that is not necessarily a word that you encounter, unlike me mistyping she. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good. <laughs> Everything's great. Don't worry about it. All right. So these are our players, as it were. So do we just dive in? I guess we just dive in. Okay. I'm going to give these cards a quick little shuffle again. All right. So we have a list of questions that we can answer in any order. Uh, some maybe lead to others more instant. Like the board that Austin has done for this game is super tight. I, I really like how it looks. Um, I love I love a good neon. I really love a good neon. We love neon. some neon. 
But yes, we have a bunch of questions we can answer in any order that we ask to each other. Um, and once we've answered all of those, then we have like the big questions of like, mm -hmm. yeah, the 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 bit the the why are we here kind of a vibe. Yeah. But yeah, so I would like to know what we're doing personally. But we're not we're not supposed to answer our task until the end. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, the the questions that are the last Great. ones. Yeah, right. I can read. I was thinking about it, and I was like, no, I don't want to... I was thinking about that, specifically, and then I was like, no, I don't want to do that, and it turns out it's in the rules, so... <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the first time we've ignored rules. No, we should do them. We should do it right. Let's let's look at the board, and then start near the bottom half of the board. Maybe this will, will help us. Yeah. There's something interesting about pulling the task later. Because it then sort of puts everything else into a new context, which is cool. Yeah. So. It's good. Okay. Let, let, let's start off with a key visual. What cool vehicle are we traveling in? Yeah, I was just thinking. I was like, let's start with the vehicle. Let's mm -hmm. let's start with this this cool vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was about to be like, I was about to be like, what if it's a cool bike? And then I was like, you can't hear anything over a cool bike. Alas. Alas, unless it's like, unless it's like a cool bike that has a like quieting. No, you would have to. No, you couldn't put a quiet. You couldn't put like a muffle spell on a cool bike because then you wouldn't be able to hear if other shit is happening around you. Yeah. That's so dangerous. It's fine. So it has to be a cool car. Char kind of shown up on a cool bike before we got into a shared vehicle. We done. Oh, that. I see. I see what you're after, Jane. What? I don't know what you could be referring to. Motorbikes are cool. Charlena deserves a motorbike. Yes, she does. I'm just like, huh. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Char can have shown up on a cool bike, and then they. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do also. Mm -hmm. I do just love. Oh no, you know what? This can be afterwards. Okay. This can be after. Okay. Um I was gonna be like, I love the image of them on a bus, but I was like, this can be after. They have to ditch the car. Mm-hmm. And so they ride a bu a bus back. Mm-hmm. Good shit. But I, I think it's I think it's like a cool car. Alright. Is it a I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> Neither do I. I'm gonna um uh, actually just pull a card because there aren't that many gaps on the board. Um we're filling in a board. And it's fun. This mm -hmm. might give us some uh, cool details. Cards are good. Cards are good. Windfall. Fortune lost, secret uncovered, a bullet dodged, or beginner's luck, an old habit, a new scar. An interesting, an interesting choice. Mm -hmm. Though to be fair, when I think of windfall, I think of like apples, obviously. I just love the notion that it's like that kind of honey, that kind of bright snow white apple red car. Mm. And it's like the most kind of like ostentatious vehicle <laughs> that, or maybe in daylight, it would be super ostentatious, but like as the sun, yeah. as the sun is setting, it takes on almost this like, deeper hue and it sort of like mellows from like that almost like bright like apple red to something more like black cherry color yeah yeah very classy what am i saying this is urban fantasy the car actually does shift slightly yes which is good because it makes it slightly less noticeable <laughs> yeah it's sort of like the car understands the assignment yes the the car understood the assignment. And, like, for all that that sounds like I'm being facetious, I mean, like, I like the notion that if there was a glamour off, this isn't a car, this is, like, a creature that is currently in the form of a car. Because that's my jam. I'm, I'm nodding. You can't see me. This keeps happening. <laughs> but it's almost like, oh, my God, this is our contact. He's taking us to the job. Oh my god. 
I have a fantasy is the best. I love them. Urban fantasy is really good. Isn't the thing. Mm -hmm. Is it two Transformers? Well, no, because it looks like a car. And it's sort of like, for all intents and purposes, is a car, but doesn't like then stand up as a... Okay, 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 okay. Though the notion of it being, because fuck it, why not, of like a construct of some kind of like fey design mm -hmm. that can sort of become enough of a car to then work with a glamour to pass as a car mm -hmm. is just, is real good. Also, like, as I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit as a movie, and uh, yes. oh my god, his name is Benny. That name haunts my every day, I swear to Christ. <sighs> did you not see that it was Benny's Cafe in the Miami Vice clip? Yeah, I did. Oh. I yelled in my head. Oh it's, my it's good. But anyway, but yeah, like, so the notion that there's a, a more than a more than just sentience with this vehicle that as the sun's going down it's like taken on this sort of like deep cherry red like not cherry red uh, like black cherry sort of quality to it it's just real good good shit good shit good shit we know we know what we're doing the the, the car is just taking us there yeah like it's more like the location is we don't know yeah okay 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 I think it's a way. It's like got the little. It's got the little GPS voice, but there's no GPS in the car. Mmm, good shit. Love that. Um, but yeah, I like the idea that it's a, a an added layer of protection and deniability, because yeah, we can't say where it's happening because we don't know. Something yeah, like exactly. That. We don't know. We couldn't fucking tell you where we were going. We, we couldn't tell you where we were going or how to get there because we mm -hmm. don't know. Right. Well, I guess that answers the destination question. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Now, I like that we aren't we aren't sure exactly. Maybe I mean we could have a vague yeah. idea, like we don't have an address, but like I'm gonna put a car, a a car. I'm gonna put a card. Mm -hmm. Okay, Empress. Oh my God! Hey, Zoom feature work, please. Uh, unrivaled serenity, a master tactician on and off the battlefield, or. Uh, consumed by the big picture, unconcerned with mortal frailty. Are, well, spindle wheels doing some shit today, huh? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of interesting given what we were just talking about at the top with Charlena's whole vibe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. But I do. Th I do think that like Char is paying attention to what's happening, like like where they're going. But like, even she loses their way. Mm. Like loses her way. I love like, that. She's like, these are turns that we don't make. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're turns that even exist. That that's the question. Is is this like roads that we can't see, but roads roads that only you know beings like our car can drive down. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the fucking weirdest thing I've ever said. Mm -hmm. Beings like our car. Uh huh. Love this. Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> what do, what do we pass? That's another that's another good question. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna draw Oh, well, you did it. <laughs> I did it. Roman candle, a landmark that we pass. Glory and glamour, a dazzling display, a garish firework. Or shock and awe, sound and fury, a mask slipping to reveal fangs. Okay, so it's a carnival, right? Ooh, yes, love this. And it's like I apologize to anybody. I apologize to everyone listening to this who <laughs> understands this reference. It's like a dark carnival. I mean, I was going to say like, oh, like the devil's carnival and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but it's like, not quite at. I don't think it's quite at the devil's carnival. But I do know what you mean. Like very sort of unseely chord energy. Yeah, yeah. It's like a. It's a. It's a, you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave vibe. Yeah, this is definitely the sort of carnival where if a model walked in, they probably wouldn't leave. Yes. Yeah. Thankfully, mm... I'm thinking, while, while you ruminate on that thought, like, 
this is the kind of music you think of when you hear a calliope machine like that kind of yeah yeah i think that char is half mortal mm -hmm. i think that she tenses when they pass it mm -hmm. because when it comes to stuff like that it's always a question for her mm. and you can never take that like she can never take that risk because there's always the chance that mm. the mortal side of her will win over i love that but they do and the so it's like there's there's a part of her that is because it's it's designed to draw mortal people in yes so there's the part of her that's drawn and there's a part of her that's fighting against it yeah and she's got enough experience to not like yeah but it's still a very tense moment for her I was just thinking, I like the notion, and um, despite like the name and the monikers, maybe this carnival isn't actively malicious. I just like the notion that this is how it, it exists. It, it exists to do what it does. Because it, yeah. it does provide joy to a certain kind of creature. Yes. It's just sort of like... I don't... Yeah, no. No, no, no. I just wanted to make it clear... I knew you would probably be on the vibe, but I just like for our listeners, like this is not like an evil place. And it no, it's just dark. Mm. For sure, there's just yeah, it's just it's just wrong. But mm. it's once you get in there, it's fine. It's fun. It, it, it's just off. It's just off a little bit. And if you're if you're not mortal, you can tell that. Yeah. Uh, it's literally the um the notion of what is like carnival esque. Like the whole point of it is it it subverts assumptions about the dominant style or atmosphere. I, I am mm -hmm. checking an article, but because I I watched a YouTube video that was talking literally about like the carnival esque, and it's like it's deeply rooted in like the human psyche, what it is to be carnival, and it's sort of like it's almost like in the way that jesters are, it's like up is down, left is right, dark is light. And that that's the whole point of it. Yeah. It exists yeah. because there has to be the shadow to the light. Like, you can't have one without the other. They exist in balance with each other. Yeah. And part of that balance is the carnival itself. Yeah. I wonder if the carnival itself is not... Is... is I, I am taking back what I said before because I'm thinking mm -hmm. more about it. Okay. I don't think the carnival itself is wrong. I think there's something in the carnival that is bad. Oh, yeah. But the carnival came up around it to prevent, you know, if you're too busy playing street fair games and buying food and going on rides, you can't make it to the House of Mirrors. Mm. I love that, like the way um, a body protects itself by making antibodies. Like that's mm -hmm. so cool. I love that. Like its own checks and balances. Yeah, it just has the unfortunate side effect because it's not very good at it. Yeah. Of that, you know, mortals can't leave. Yeah. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so you you know you know not to go near the carnival. Yeah. Sick. But it is, it is still, it does still feel wrong because it's got that, it's still got that vibe. Yeah. It, it's like when something is on a frequency that you can't hear, but you can feel it like that, yeah. but like emotionally. Yes. Yes. And it's, a, it's, a, Char was like, I know I said that she's a sword lesbian, but I don't think she does her assassinations with swords because that's the, the large. But she does have knives. Beautiful. She's she's a blade lesbian. <laughs> and she was like sharpening her knives. And she just like pauses. All I can think of that is that old adage. And I think it's like, well, she's like kings get the sword. Which is mm -hmm. a whole thing from like like executions, but yeah. I just that 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 sentiment just like popped right into my head. Yeah. Like, if Char has the sword on a job, you know it's a high level. <laughs> yeah, you know that it's high profile. Exactly. I think at that, uh, Kiyoti will, like, raise... I like the that neither of them are driving, because obviously the car can drive itself. So they're just, like, chilling. Like, in the front seat. But just, yeah. like, 
it's just very good. And Charity was just filing their nails uh, into like, <laughs> but into like scary points kind of a vibe. Like, in the same way that Char is sharpening knives, mm-hmm. Charity is arguably doing the same thing, but just with their claws that just look more like fingernails, like long nails in this light. So, Vicar Glamour Baby. Um, it just like looks to her just like you're right there dear I will be alright I'm just sort of like wrap gently against the um, dashboard and um, just like mind speeding up a little just for a moment because I feel like Kyori like maybe wasn't looking isn't like paying attention to the surroundings in the same way that Chara's and as soon yeah. as like they see what it is they're just like like ah and isn't gonna comment on it directly yeah the the gps <laughs> the gps voice says finding alternate route <laughs> good shit my vibe check was fiddler's rosin by the way Ooh, nice uh making do for want of a horseshoe nail aid promise but never awarded so hmm <laughs> Fun. Um, let's see. Which one of us would have someone to call? It might be because Char. I don't. I mm, I was gonna say I don't think that at this point Char has anyone to call, unless it's Marlo. That's a vibe. I like that. It could be Marlo. God damn it, August is offline. <laughs> Cause I was gonna be like, hey August, do you want to do a pickup for this? I'm sure they would. As long as you don't ask them to do it this weekend, I think it will be fine. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not No, I know you wouldn't. Not... My point is like generally speaking, they're game. <laughs> the problem is the then then the problem with that is is that I would want the the only problem with that is I would very much want to do it, mm. but the answers would influence I the rest of the game. Yeah. And I'm like, ugh. <sighs> mm. She could call Kari. Mm-hmm. Or she could you know what it is? She calls Marlo, Kari picks up. Love that. Um let me let me let me pull a card for this just to see. So did we pass like a call box on this alternate route? And was that what? <laughs> Fucking incredible. <laughs> incredible. I love that Lieutenant on one side is Marlo and on the other side is Kari. Mm-hmm. Because we've got right hand of power, which would be Marlo. And we've got impartial emissary soldier for hire, which is Kari. Fucking incredible. I love Spindle Wheel. Yeah, I I yeah, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a call box on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about a phone and I'm like, I want it to be a call box. Mm-hmm. Um so Char kind of like taps on the dashboard and goes, Can you give me can you give me a minute? And the car sort of slows and to a stop. And as as she goes to get out, she's sort of like, I just like the notion of it being something like the pact is sealed. It's like just like you asked for a minute kind of a vibe, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I'm on a I'm on a time limit. <laughs> oh, I just like the notion. Oh, how about this? No, as uh she gets out, she has like this fluttering of like um just like. Well, you feel a little bit. It's like when you sit up, stand up too quick. Mm-hmm. But it's not that, and it's because uh, the entity currently, the form of a car, has taken a minute of Charlene's life force, just like a minute she might have spent at the end of her life doing something else. It's just like, and now the car has it because she asked for a minute, a minute for a minute. And I like Faye. Mm. If you're cool with that. Fair enough. 
And I don't think it's done it like maliciously. It's sort of just like it is what it is. And maybe that's, she, nope, that's she, she didn't think the full of the phrasing. Because No, I think I mean Char has experience. She yeah. understands the you know, the price. Sure. There is a price. So um so she hits a call box and dials a number. And uh picks up and she can sound hear the sounds of like dinner being made in the background. Mm. Hello. Oh, Hello, Kari. Hey, Lady Shaw. How's it going? God, I fucking love Kari. <laughs> Did we... Wait, hold on a second. Quick quick pause here. Mm -hmm. Did we ever play off of each other in that Firebrands game? I don't think so. There may have been one interaction. All right. Great. But there's like, Fell is the, the bridge there. For sure. So. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. But it's just like, I'm just like, damn, I don't think we ever interacted in character in that game, which is such a shame. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize at the time. Um, is, is Marlo available by any chance? Oh, no, he's not back yet. He had a, he had a thing, you know how it is. And there's, a, d a deliberate pause because like they're both probably paranoid enough like this is a line who knows who's listening all yes. that jazz oh yeah no i i understand that's fine is everything all right yeah yeah everything's yeah everything's fine um i don't even think I don't even think she necessarily had a thing that she wanted to say. Yeah. It was just like, if she heard Marlo's voice, she would have thought of something. Yeah. I feel that. And she kind of is like, I um, don't really have a lot of time, but um, when he, when, when he does get back, just, um, let him know that I called and that I think it's been a while and I'd like to get coffee at some point and catch up. Can do. He'll be sorry he missed you. <laughs> and she kind of like smiles a little bit and she goes, I, I hope the two of you have a nice night, Kari. I think she hears the smile. It's like, oh, that's the idea. <laughs> Look after yourself, Charlena. I will. You too. Always do. Um, and she hangs up. Hmm. Um, so I did draw cards. The regret, uh survivor scar crossed in body and mind wounded and raw hearted or shipwreck sailor mountain roamer shiv maker snake eater and uh so that's uh what do you discuss which obviously i kind of got into a little bit and then unsaid what don't you say uh knight a well-armed soldier a banner bearer a champion or um til yeah okay that does say tilter tilter of windmills teethed on tradition malice bred by boredom um I do think that if Char, and this is this is a meta thing that I'm saying, yeah. If Char had managed to get Marlo on the phone, um, she would have asked about there was a subordinate of theirs who, a, a subordinate. That sounds really weird. <laughs> um, the face, I guess, of their organization who. Who is lost. Yeah. Not dead, just lost. Hmm. And Char would have kind of asked, like, have you given up on them? Hmm. Will you ever? If we lose someone else like that, and like, not saying if you lose me, if I am lost. 
will you give up on me? Mm. And I will ask August about that at some point and get the answer to that question because I would like to know now hmm. that I have said it. But yeah, that is... So so that... I think that makes the call mine, which would mean that the item would be yours. Mm -hmm. So what Kyoto bought on this job? Hmm. This card's been following me lately. Um, I pulled. The I don't like to hear that, Jade. Given my surname, I realize how alarming that is. Apologies. Um. No, it's not that. It's just the fucking context of the card itself. Uh, the card I pulled is the final rose, a coffin flower, a veiled threat, or the last bloom of the season, a tribute, an invitation. I'm given the what we talked about about Kyoto's whole vibe. I feel like it's like the last bloom, like it's something of that nature. The top half of the card. Now I've flipped it this way up. I should. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> dual sided cards for a reason. Um. Hmm. I think um, Char gets back in the car and uh, Kyori is like putting their file away and there is something in their bag that is glowing a little bit. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, fuck it. Lean in. Uh, I think uh, Lean all the way in. Chuck can see like the top of like a bell jar almost in there and it's being oh, lit boy. from within by something oh boy and because of the hues of the colors just like it's like almost like a like a soft pink neon -y glow mm. i mean it's not quite as abrasive as neon it's not it's not as strong as neon but Cast but it's light. getting up there. And it casts light, for sure. Yeah. Oh, boy. I think she just kind of eyes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As she, like... And I think what happens is she, like, taps the car mm -hmm. to uh, be like, okay, we can move on. And um, another minute of her life is taken from her because she took two minutes. Mm -hmm. But that's less important. But she goes, she kind of um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I I wanna I wanna know. Which of these do you wanna? I wanna first? know help and hurt. Okay, which do you wanna know first? I wanna do help. Let's do help first. Okay. Let's do boon and then bane. Alrighty. Hmm. How it helps us. Pulled black book. Bribes taken. Murderers bought. Secrets recorded. An old memory, a family tree, a private journal. Will it pull info for us? Maybe it's that, or maybe it's like, oh, it's that a bear witness. Oh, yeah, it super is. Because, like, whatever this is, I go, like, this is some kind of, like, living plant child vibe. All I can think of is the archivist, uh, not the archivist. Thanks, Johnny. The archive ivy from the Dresden Files right now. Um, mm. But like mm -hmm. a plant. And it's less like it's not like a full-on like a leshy or like a nymph or a dryad. It's not quite that level of humanoid. But it's like definitely this it's, it's the cutting or a bloom of a central tree that is a um, arbiter or focal point of knowledge for mm -hmm. Fae. And this is a cutting of it or the last of a season's blooms. But it, mm. in this mm -hmm. isolated capacity, still has the means to take in information. The final rose. Exactly. Yeah. I like the notion of what this basically is. Is this is a this is like a a magical wiretap? Yeah. All right. How does it hurt me? How does it hurt you? Arbalists. Fucking opportunity in the canopy, picking off the weak and abandoned, or stewards of the land who require sacrifice of blood and bond. Given that we were just talking about plants, that's just 
So good. Mwah. 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 Thank you, Spindle. So good. Um, is this another thing where it's the humanness of Charles Heritage? Yeah. Yes. And she kind of goes, Ah, I... Kyoto, can you do me a favor, please? I can certainly try. You know the dangers of asking like that, though. Can you close your bag for me? That I can do. This is like she's got her like eyes closed and is like looking. Yeah, like at her hands. Yeah, I'll like close that. I think a little like viney tendril that had started snaking its way out of Kyoto's bag towards Shalina retracts. Yeah, like. I feel like these archive trees, again, it's not a predatory thing, but they're drawn to human life in the same way that a plant turns towards the sun yeah. because there's so much going on there. Like, Charlene knows mm -hmm. so much as well. Yeah. I think it wouldn't have been able to do anything. Sure. Agreed. But... It would have tried, and that's the point. The thing is, also, she has secrets. Like, yes. it could have taken something. We've well, not taken it, but it could have learned something that wasn't hers to give away. Yes. Yes. She has a lot of secrets. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like... About half of them are stuff that she just doesn't talk about, mm -hmm. because there's... Like, it's one of those, like, if anyone asked me, I might say something, but no one asks me. And then half of them are, no, no one can fucking know this. And I think there's that concern also. Sure. Interestingly. It's very hard mm -hmm. to be a fey assassin when you're half human. Mm-hmm. Uh Interestingly, given everything we were just talking about, I pulled second son for Coyote's goal. Um, stricken from history, unseen in mirrors, unreflected in lakes, or a moon out of orbit, starved of companionship, seeking completion. <sighs> very, very, very good. I think whatever this task is, whoever it may involve, needs to be forgotten. And this final rose isn't just here as a passive wire tap mm -hmm. i just I'm, it's I'm gonna siphon like, the memories away i'm thinking like the word eater from autumn and hyron yes it can consume memory that's pro and that's probably another reason why char doesn't want it anywhere near her uh-huh because she's got secrets but she's also got stuff that she's not willing to lose for sure um, I have drawn a goal for tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> moon. A solar eclipse, a complete and rapid transformation, or harvest moon and dark machinations illuminated. Okay, so this is easy. Mm hmm This is easy. There is something going on with our target. Mm. There is there is something deeper happening. Yeah. There's a deeper conspiracy. And Char wants to know what it is, mm -hmm. and she wants she wants to drag it out into the morning sun and uh, not be there when people find out what it is. <laughs> she wants this person needs to be forgotten. What they were doing does not does mm. not very good. So 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 I think and I think we know each other's goals. Yeah, right? I think so. I because I think I think we wouldn't be able to be doing this job together if we didn't know. So your job, your responsibility is forget the person. Mm -hmm. My responsibility is expose the lies. Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely hysterical for reasons that I will not get into. <clears throat> um, okay. So. So, last couple of crossed pairs. We have practicalities and ethics and desire and action. 
I think they're meant to be questions that we ask the other person, so... Okay. Also, the item is what shouldn't you have brought, which is very fun. <laughs> very, very fun. Like, when we got this assignment, you are not meant to, be you are not meant to bring an archive tree. No. No, I was not. Is that when... Is that what's going to prompt one of these questions? Because... Charlena knows exactly what that is. Mm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's fair. What do you wish you could say to me? What a good question. Hmm. I pulled priestess. A calming presence, a reality grounded, a divine purpose. Or cracking with power, mired in blood, melancholic and distant. Hmm. This is what I want to say, but don't. You can also draw the second card to cross if that will help. Probably. Well, I'll grab that new. Hmm. Just all the fucking flowers. Uh, Ophelia's Garland. Allow those who crowned you to change who you are. Aww. A wilting flower crown, a dubious honour, a sickly and desperate faith. Man, that makes for a fun pair of cards. That's a great pair of cards. Hmm. You can always... Here, here is a thing also that I will say. You can always flip them around if that hmm. feels better to you. You don't have to. I'm just saying. Sure. We know. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Hmm. Oracle's good, though. Or Oracle's very Oracle's good. Oracle's great. I think, Kyoti, because of all this, the stuff that's been going on, and I'm sort of combining both sides of Priestess here, Kyoti wants to... That spindle wheel, baby. That spindle wheel, baby. Kind of wants to comment on how... The nature of what Charlena is. This thing that so far in this journey has seemed like, maybe to a to an outside observer, a weakness. She is this fey assassin, or works as this fey assassin while being also mortal. And the difficulty that brings. Mm -hmm. And how she doesn't know just how powerful it makes her like she can wield iron and things like that like i think he wants to reassure her says no i see what you are and what you are it's not something as trite as you aren't weak because like charlene her jack say is dangerous and incredibly good at what she does um, and she fucking knows it. And she knows it. Like, you never, she's not somebody that needs a pep talk. Like, you got yeah. this girl. Like, that's not what it is. No. But rather an acknowledgement of not only are there the strengths that you know, there are strengths that you don't. Yeah. And because. It's, it's, yeah, it's an acknowledgement of I see the, the, you know, it is, it is not going unnoticed. Yeah. And I think what it is instead that comes out, and I don't know exactly how to phrase this. Abstract it. Yeah, it sort of like ends up almost like offhandedly talking about the role in society that Charlena is playing and like mm -hmm. how exhausting it must be to have all those faces thinking about like a wilting flower crown a dubious honor mm. and it comes out like that it's like mm -hmm. i see what you're doing and i see that it's hard rather than going you are so much more powerful than this and when you yeah. realize that you are going to be terrifying and a force to be reckoned with and it's more like Okay, instead I'm going to talk about this because you do yeah. do good stuff. And the thing is, I'm already terrifying and a force to be reckoned with. I could just be more terrifying well, and a force to exactly be exactly that. With. Like, imagine somebody yeah. like Charlena taking over, like, the throne of the Unseelie Court, for example. Yeah. Like, 
and then the notion of cor power corrupting and things like that because right now her focus is on ha helping the weak and what might happen if she was tapped into a different power source that then changed her priorities but talking about mm -hmm. this instead like how she dances the dance this is like it's still a pep talk but it's talking about something safer mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's like admiring the dance steps that charlena can make around the floor politically yeah. speaking she is very good at that <laughs> i feel like kiori for all their charm is not a subtle person whereas charlena knows how to be Charlena knows how to read between the lines. She's had to learn. Yeah. She was she was a force to learn when she took when she took over the family. Yeah. The family seed. Um Yeah. Whereas like So she knows. Yeah. Whereas Kyoti does also like have to be is beholden to certain things, like can't really lie <laughs> yeah. without feeling like without it causing consequences and like eye and sickness and stuff like that. So I think that there's you know, I think it's fun if the Jackstad family has a similar has a similar enough pact, but they've all learned how to politics talk. Yes. Good shit. So they can politics their talk they can politics talk their way around yeah. what they're actually saying. Yeah. So without it being an outright lie. Very cool. Also, questions. You can speak in questions and those that mm -hmm. can count as sorry sorry for the collapse, whoever's editing this in the future. Um and um I'm fidgeting a lot because it is ten thirty in the morning my time. Um <laughs> so so you can you can obfuscate by asking questions instead of giving answers. Like a politician. Also. <laughs> Very much so. Mm hmm All right. Yeah, listen, she's using it to her advantage. Oh yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um all right. Well, let's uh, ask. I think after that, talking about the politics of it and like how Charlene has gotten good at doing that dance, despite everything, the conversation like, so what does she doubt about the ethics of our task and the practicalities of it? All right. I'm going to do the practicalities first. Laughing mimic, mm. common bellows turn from furnace to songbook or. A river babbling in a familiar voice, muffled words without meaning. Mm. Fuck. Shit. Mm. I almost never get that card, so it's really nice to see it here. <laughs> um, Princess. Sheltered and fearful, seen and never heard, expected to suffer lightly, or master of statecraft, coy and clever, wealth beyond golden land. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do ethics first because this one's pretty easy because it's both sides of the princess card, right? Yeah. The ethics of the situation is it's very possible that whoever is the person that we've been hired to kill is just a puppet. Mm. And the issue is, is that there's probably, uh, here we go, laughing mimic, perfect. There's no way for us to know. Yeah. There's no way for us to know in either direction. And if it talks like a duck and walks like a duck, why would we think that it's not a duck? Yeah, exactly. And um I'm not I'm not certain that it would stop Char from going through with the job. Yeah. Cuz I don't think it would. But the worry is still there because she cares so much about people and she hates when people are being used. Mm. And we have no way of knowing just how deep this runs. For sure. Love that. I love the notion that this is the conversation the two of us are having as we uh, move down these twisting gaps between buildings that are technically too narrow for a car big enough for two people to get down and... Yeah. Yeah. All that good. I shit. love that we've we've established what our task is before. You know, whatever, we'll draw the card and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe outwardly the task is assassinate somebody, but is that actually what we're doing? 
Yeah, that's true. So we get there and we we learn what it is that we're actually doing. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Should I draw the card or do you want to do it? Be my guest, please. So we we finally we have finally arrived at our destination, and we have learned what we are doing. <laughs> oh boy! Spindle wheel, you're saucy oh, today. <laughs> Siren, a strangled scream, a klaxon wailing in the fog, a message scrawled in blood, or a warning unheeded, jagged stones mistaken for safe harbor. Oh. Thank you, Spindle Wheel. Uh, this is Thank you so much. This is incredible. God damn. Oh, I love Spindle Wheel. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna duplicate the card so we can have both sides up at the same time. Because of who I am, he has a person. There we go. Uh valid. Very valid. And I like to see both. Both of them are good. Well this is this is the confirmation, isn't it? This isn't just yes. an assassination. Yeah. Who could have seen that one coming? Who indeed? What is there? What do we find? I think it's like like Charlena was worried about. I think what we realize is this is a mouthpiece. This is just one piece. Like, it's 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 the mouthpiece specifically. <sighs> like, we might be able to silence part of this for a little while, but this is just a part of it. Cut off the head of the Hydra, two more grow in its place. Exactly. I like the idea if it's a literal mm-hmm. mouthpiece. Yeah. Or if it's, maybe it's like, we get to where we're going. Oh, you know what it is? Mm-hmm. It's another call box. Mm. And inside of the inside of the little booth, there's a list of numbers to call. Hmm. And depending on the numbers, you get different. Each each number has. It's like. This is a this is a weak analogy. It's like a choose your own adventure game. Uh-huh. So depending on which number you call, you get the you get a different set of coordinates. Yeah. And I think that I think that Char goes into the call box and she turns around and she goes, "Should have brought my sword." Well, that's the thing about not being given all the information, isn't it? You always end up feeling woefully underprepared. Hmm. Do you mind backing out of the box, dear? Um, give me just a moment. All right. Do you have a pen? Of course. Pull out a pen. It's a ridiculously nice fountain pen. Just, like, pristine. (laughs) Okay, second question. Do you also have something to write on? Uh, um, a notebook is proffered and it's again it's got to be a little bit OTT like something that looks like it's from like the 1920s or even like you would find in like the a Paget illustration just like yes. yeah 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 just like just being pulled out of what is basically like a handbag <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely because Jar was just going to to write this on her arm mm-hmm which is a very dissonant image for her, but like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a really nice fountain pen. She's not going to write with a really nice fountain pen on her own skin. Mm-hmm. Also, who knows what's in this fountain pen? You don't want to um, ask. And she kind of she kind of jots down the phone numbers mm-hmm. because, and I think actually she like she goes down the list and she like picks one at random, calls it, flinches, writes down the coordinates. And then steps out of the call box. You all right there? Yes. All right. They're mockingbirds. Ah. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, you should be all right with this, but nevertheless, if you want to wait by the car, go right ahead. 
They won't, um, it won't take out of your book, right? No. No, no, no. Okay, good. Um, Perfect. Kyoti steps into the box, closes the door, pulls the bell jar out and sets it on the little tiny shelf. And this plant... And now I'm just imagining like little baby Audrey too. Uh, but actually more like a smaller version of the plant elemental from Hellboy 2. Like that. Kind of, yeah. But on a much, on like a miniature scale. Mm -hmm. And these little tendrils like start feeding through like the uh, the holes in the phone receiver. And like, just like, it looks like it's wiring itself into the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you just sort of hear the phone just start ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And, like, the shift changes. And you it's, like, different bells. And, like, a phone shouldn't be able to be that musical, shouldn't be able to carry that many notes with it. But it's doing something. <laughs> yeah. So. I accidentally looked at the card that I drew for my success, so I took it and drew a different card. No worries. So I, I, our success, I did our success first. Mm -hmm. So I am going to flip this one over to see if we succeed. <laughs> Fiddler's Rosin! <laughs> the vibe check returns. Oh my god, Spindle Wheel. <laughs> Spindle wheel always choosing violence. <coughs> Making do for want of a horseshoe nail, aid promised but never awarded, or an artist's tool to sweeten and empower clarity and strength through friction. Mm -hmm. Fuck's sakes. Yeah, yeah. I would call it a success, but I would call it a it's it's making we we made do. I was gonna say, is this like a fucking? Is this a four to six, as it were? And is this a mixed success? Is this a success with consequences? Well, it's going to have consequences. That we only found one head of the Hydra. Yeah, exactly. It's a start. It's a start. A start has been made. Do hmm. you succeed? Oh, let's see. Blizzard, a cutting white cold in the wind, snow smothering the world in quiet. Or a cold snap, a sudden freeze, a moment in time suspended in frost. I think this is a partial success. This is fine tendrils of plant life winding their way around phone lines that spread out through the city, both magical and non. This is flowers blossoming in places that have no right to have a flower. This is ears listening. But this is not a removal. So... On the first side, you know, the archive tree is not going to go hungry for a while. Yeah, but... There's too much to be removed. Yeah. But... Also, like, if this much was removed, its absence would be noticed. And that's not how we do things. Mm -hmm. So this is, instead, mapping everything out. So partial success. It's not... The Oof. goal intended. Oh no! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh no! Yes! Oh my yes. god! <sighs> Incredible! I'm gonna draw. I'm drawing one more because I want to complicate this. Of course you do. I am going to pivot this as good as I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, sure, okay. D <sighs> Spindle wheel, can we please let her have a break? Apparently not. No. Um, do I succeed? The card that I drew is the Fallen. 
a would-be <laughs> martyr with delusions of sainthood, a powder keg in want of a spark, or a sheep fleeced, a chump bamboozled, a chronically unlucky sucker. I drew a card to complicate it, and I got snake oil. A simple solution to a complicated problem, easy in theory, difficult in practice, or a stopgap, a placebo, a sweet-tasting poison. So I think the thing is, is that yes, I do succeed. I think that what I'm going to pull here, I'm going to pull a powder keg in want of a spark. I'm going to pull mm -hmm. both sides of snake oil. And I'm going to say that the archive flower, or the archive tree, is going to be the thing that makes me succeed here, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Because of course it is. Because of course it's going to do a better job at rooting out, pun intended, um, <laughs> the information that I wanted to bring to the forefront, even if it doesn't necessarily expose it. Because, like, what Char is going to try and do with the phone numbers that she pulled and the coordinates that she got is going to be really, really difficult. Even though it feels like it would be really easy because, like, ostensibly. But she knows, right? Like, she can look at, like the seven phone numbers that she got and know that there's seven different sets of coordinates and that can all branch off and interweave into a labyrinth that she'll never be able to navigate. Yeah. She took the numbers anyway because, uh, by God, is, are they gonna fucking try? Like, whoever it is that hired them, maybe she just gives it to the car. But whatever, whatever comes next, like, but she... But she knows that, you know, this is all just waiting to boom. Yeah. And so she's got to be real careful about where she steps. <laughs> I think quite like finding yourself in the center of a minefield. Mm-hmm. Good shit. Good shit. It's a good game. It's fun. Yeah. So I like the notion that we hand the information over to the car. Yes. The archive tree sprout is uh, not going to be distangled. And the car just drives off. Yeah. And we need to find a bus. Yeah. Great. Good shit. <laughs> we just both silently get on a bus. And go back into the mortal part of the city. Mm hmm Or, hey. Hey. Hey, Jade. Hey, Mac. What if uh -huh. we play Navigator to get back? Ew! That's fun. Fuck yeah. We Let's could just... It. We could just do that. Hell yeah. We are the masters of our destiny. Hi, it's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. 
We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again!